Starting in April, we'll start to see some commercial Spectra 6 panels that can display art that are coming to the market. From what I've found, there are four different manufacturers, but they all have kind of little differences and nuances. So I want to walk you guys through that and kind of explain what is coming in terms of these Spectra 6 art frames. First, I want to start with the Blooming 8. It's kind of touted as an AI frame. It is currently on Kickstarter, so I want to walk through a little bit of the actual Blooming 8 panels and the things that it offers in comparison to some of the other ones as well. So digging into the Blooming 8, it launched on Kickstarter last week and it had an $18,000 goal and it's already at 576, so they're roughly at 30 times their kind of goal there already. I've seen a lot of these saying they're the world's first like e-ink frame, but uh, who knows, it'll really depend on which one actually comes to the market first. They're all using Spectra 6, which is the latest in the color e-ink technology. And as you'll see through the promotional content, these panels are slow to refresh, but the benefit being when they do refresh, it's a very clear, very vivid picture. I had the chance to see the ink poster at CES this year in January, and from my eyes, it looked very good. That's why I'm excited for them. My goal with these is really to kind of display artwork and also photography that I've done. That's kind of why I wanted to break these down for you guys. One thing I did notice with the Blooming 8 is that it has an SD card reader. And on my ink poster video, a lot of people commented that they didn't like the app features. In case, you know, in 10 years, the app were to go defunct, then you don't have a paperweight. Hopefully if that were to happen to any of these, the company would open source it so that you could still use the product. But that seemed to be a common concern amongst people. So I think having the SD card reader is definitely a nice function as well. And they're also touting having built-in AI creation. I actually saw that Blooming 8 had done like a one of those digital frames that we've all seen that you probably your, you gave to your grandmother or someone in your family to cycle photos, but those always have to be connected to power. The beauty of Spectra 6 is you upload an image and then it's not using any power and it only does so when you change it. Anyways, I saw Bluminate did release one of those. I can't really find it online anymore, so I think it was like a short-lived product. In my opinion, they probably pivoted to Spectra 6 and this is kind of what they're, they're doing now. But anyways, the built-in AI creation I saw from one of the videos of those digital wireless frames, not the e-ink ones that you can, in the app, you can kind of create something with AI with a prompt, put it up. You can even create moving images on that one. This one you obviously couldn't, it would be a static image. But, so they are kind of pushing that AI feature of being able to upload AI art as well. And this is one of the few ones that I saw that has the 7.3 inch canvas, which is uh, kind of nice. It's a little bit of a smaller size, but the PPI is lower on the 7.3s definitely less than the 13.3 and the 28.5 has the highest DPI of them all. But one thing I thought was nice is that these are actually compatible with the Ikea Rodol frames. So I looked those up. They're not very expensive. They're probably, depending on the size, it's somewhere between like 10 and 40 bucks. So that's nice. You would easily be able to go pick up or order from Ikea and change your frame as you see fit depending on where you're actually putting the device and if you want it to blend with your, your furniture or your other art that you already have there. So you can see here, when it kind of finishes the digital printing process, it does look like a generic kind of piece of art, which is the whole goal of it. And you can see here, they compare it from Kaleido 3 to Spectra 6. See, it's much more vivid because it's using actual colors versus like a, a filter or a, a color filter array that Kaleido 3 uses. I think the 28.5, which has the sharp IGZO technology, that basically allows it to be faster for the printing process, and I believe it ups the contrast. When I talked to Enrico from Ink Poster, that's kind of what he told me, and then I, I looked at some of the spec sheets and the data behind the technology as well. And the nice thing about all of these is they're cords free. So some of them are claiming six months up to a year, and some of them are claiming multiple years. So I think that really depends on the battery size that they've put in it. So they have pretty good combo deals. Like if you want to get one of each size, if you want to get just the small one, it is, is quite cheap right now. Or if you want a combo pack, I was actually surprised that they don't have like triptych packs of uh, that's three when you have three pieces of art together. There are some cheaper ones later that we'll talk about for this 13.3 canvas specifically. 
but I believe this is the cheapest for the 28.5 that uses the shark panel. So I think the chance of success is good, but like any Kickstarter project, please look into it yourself. I'll link everything below for you to, for you to see. But you can see the pixel density is higher as you go up. And I was actually looking at their Reddit. It looks like they were originally going to have a 31.5, which is the poster style that I saw at CS. But I think the top comment was talking about, he was talking about why choose the 31 16 by nine, then the much higher density 28.5. And then uh, someone from the company responded, Francis, and he mentioned that they ended up choosing the 28.5, which is good in my book. You can see here, he even posted a image of the sharp panel they're using. And uh, from the Reddit, it sounds like they were able to get a good price and negotiate with them. So good to see that they went with that because that is kind of the pinnacle of Spectre 6 right now in terms of quality and contrast and everything and pixel density. And then I noticed in one other comment here, they're talking about the dithering algorithms. So if you're not aware, the dithering algorithm is very important with Spectre 6. It's kind of the method you use to display the actual image. And so I quickly looked that up, but there are a lot of dithering styles. You can see here what he was talking about, the Floyd Steinberg dithering versus the JJN, which is Jarvis, Judas, and Ninky dithering. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Yeah, I do want to read up more on this stuff. I talked about it in my last video, but one of my favorite features of the Remarkable is now this PDF will just get sent to my Remarkable and I can read that offline. That is pretty much the Blooming 8. It looks pretty promising from my eyes and their Kickstarter seems to be going well. And now we'll talk about another Kickstarter that uh, just happened recently, I think in January or February. The Reflection Frame is actually funded already. I did reach out to Reflection Frame and the Blooming 8, so hopefully I'll be able to get some review units and maybe compare them when I do get them. So stay tuned for that. Also, by the way, if I've missed any Spectra 6 panels that you can think of, maybe mention those below and I'll try to take a look at them. But I'm wondering, because this one already is funded if maybe it'll hit the market before the Blooming 8. They have a tap to print technology, so I wonder if there's NFC built into the frame where you can just tap it. And that is kind of nice because you don't actually have to use an app. It should just take the image, I think. And they do claim the battery is up to two years. So you can see here on their timeline, they are stating April 2025, but Kickstarters are notorious for being a little late. So we'll see if that actually does hit the target time frame. But I believe the reflection frame is only doing the 13.3 inch size. They also do mention that they will have AI generation for images as well. And then when I was at CES, E-Ink, the corporation, pointed me to a company called Allure Tech, and they had a bunch of Spectra 6 13.3 inch panels on the wall. They had these matte ones, and then they had these glass ones as well. And I've been in contact with the people that I met there. So they said, this was as of today, they said they're still getting ready to have the product launch next month. I just asked if I could get more details about the product. So when I do get those, I'll probably make a separate video on the Allure Tech. I have some more footage as well from CES, but I believe this is one of the cheaper 13.3 inch devices. They claim that it's gonna be 299, which is very cheap. It's pretty much half of what the Ink Poster 13.3 is. And still cheaper than the Blooming 8 that is at an early bird discount on Kickstarter right now. I've mentioned it before, but it didn't look great under the CS lighting because the reflections of the floor lights were kind of intervening with the actual glass there, but the matte ones looked really good. So I think under the right lighting, maybe the glass ones could look good. If you have kind of off axis lighting, then maybe the matte one would be a better option there. And I do want to see if that has an SD card reader or not, because I do vaguely remember there was some stuff on the side, so I wonder if there was an SD card slot. I was also talking to another Reddit user on the e-ink community, and he works with or is involved in this paperless paper company. I'm not 100% sure if this is exactly Spectra 6, but it looks pretty good, so I'm going to guess that it's Spectra 6. I do know that he was working on a 13 inch as well that he mentioned to me. So this is probably more of like an open source project but is definitely one to look into as well if uh, you are interested in something that is a little more customizable, perhaps. You can see here they have the calendar, the weather, 
and a website. I do hope that some of these other companies make these like sort of widgets for their own devices as well. And then finally, we have the ink poster by Pocketbook. That is one that I covered extensively at CES, and I even had a follow-up interview with the guy I met there, Enrico, to ask more questions about it. But that will certainly be the most expensive Spectra 6 panels that come to the market. They're kind of targeting the more like museum quality pieces. I will link a video here if you want to check that out. Or if you want to see Kaleido versus Gallery, what the e-readers or e-note takers have in terms of the best offer right now, you can see that here. But thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for more stuff on these Spectra 6 panels. I definitely can't wait to compare some of them and see what they look like when I upload my own art or photos to them. Bye.